All right. Hey, everybody. So this is Will right here. Your boy, Will. And recently, I think we all saw that um, Kid Cudi finally came out with Man on the Moon 3. Uh, he started hyping it up a few weeks ago, and finally it's out. I've gotten to listen to it a few times. Listen to it with, you know, headphones on my phone, in my car, in my truck when I'm in, at, at work. You know, hook it up to the Bluetooth, listen to it on there. So I've listened to it in many different ways now. And I thought it would be good to do a whole just like tier list of Kid Cudi albums and like mixtapes. Uh, I didn't include absolutely everything in here because he did have some other kind of like lesser known mixtapes. I did put like one in there that's probably a little bit lesser known. It was kind of like just like the Catholic something else, but we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, but I thought that it would be cool because I'm a big Kid Cudi fan and yeah like it, it, I just knew it would be a lot of fun to kind of talk about it and go through all of them and talk about why I rank them where I rank them and I got five tiers here S, A, B, C, D I'm sure you've seen the tier list before you know that S is the highest D would be the lowest so um, yeah let's let's get started so we're gonna start off with Wizard right here and this one um, it was kind of his first, I mean, I wouldn't say it was his first time trying to do like a rock style. It's his first rock album, but he's definitely had songs before that were like a rock style. Like on Man in the Moon 2, there was, uh, Erase Me, I believe. Yeah, Erase Me. And that had a very like rock vibe to it, you know, and he definitely has his own style, like the humming and how he kind of sings and does like all these things at the same time while he's doing these things and like all these emails keep popping up anyway um well, he just likes to sing and like do all these things all at the same time and it's just he has his own style of doing things and i remember when wizard came out it was around that time where a couple of rappers i think had rock albums or like just different kind of albums like lil wayne had a rock album that came out i think a few years after that kanye west had had um 808s and heartbreaks which was like really different and it, it didn't go over well and i will say wizard uh when i was making this list i actually almost forgot to add it on here there aren't too many songs from wizard that i love there <laughs> there are a few that are like not bad but wizard was definitely um it, it, he was trying something out i don't think it worked too well with that one i do, do think that later on with his next one it does work a little better but uh we'll talk about that later so for wizard i'm putting that in d i'm putting that in d because it just doesn't resonate with me in a way that the rest of his like albums and everything does so i'm putting that in d um so up next we have um that kid from cleveland so I put this one in here, even though it's kind of a, it's basically like a, a lot of songs that are on Man on the Moon, like quite a few just ended up on Man on the Moon, along with A Kid Named Cuddy, um, and A Kid Named Cuddy and uh, That Kid from Cleveland that came out 2008, 2009, and I think they both just kind of became Man on the Moon, but they do have, you know, some songs of their own that kind of differentiate them. Now for this one, this was actually my first time. I was in high school, you know, when this came out. This is the first time I saw anything Kid Cudi was specifically that, like, picture right there. Of, like, him with the green background, like, looking up. And that's the first thing I've ever seen or heard of with Kid Cudi. And to be honest, back in the day, I wasn't even a fan of Kid Cudi. I didn't like it. You know, I didn't like I remember, like, you know, like, the Stoner Kids and whoever would, like, listen to him. And I was like, ah, I guess he's okay. It's whatever. And then Day and Night came out, and I was like, eh, I don't really like that song. But then I listened to Man on the Moon, and that changed. But this right here, like, it, it's definitely, like, iconic to me now. Like, this is how he kind of started. You know, this is one of the first things he did, you know? And the first time that he was really, like, mainstream. And I remember it so clearly, like, seeing kids listen to this on their little iPods and shit, and seeing that picture. So... As far as how iconic it is, like, absolutely. And then, like I said, they had songs for Man on the Moon. But overall, the album itself, I mean, this mixtape itself, 
doesn't resonate with me like I said with wizard doesn't resonate with me with me like all the rest of these do so because of that even though it does have a lot, a lot of good songs on it I'm gonna put it in C I think that's a good spot for it put it in C and yeah so up next up next we have <clears throat> Sorry. Up next, we have Indicud. So this is an interesting one, because I know that this is around the time that he kind of broke away from uh, his label, you know, and I think him and Kanye West were having, like, a feud within, like, good music, and, like, he wanted his own, like, creative control, and I know that this one kind of went under the radar, and a lot of people kind of missed it. I know that, you know, obviously if you're a Kid Cudi fan, you've heard it. I'm sure plenty of people have heard it. But I, I don't really see this one ever get talked about as much. You know? And that's too bad because it's actually, like, it's actually really good. It's so good. And uh, it's, it's definitely just part of, like, that time where he was doing his own thing and making his own shit, trying to do it, like, independently. And, you know, I tried to support in the best way I could because I, I really like that. And there's definitely a couple songs on there that to this day are some of my absolute favorites by Kid Cudi. Like he had the resurrection of Scott, Scott, Mes Scott Meskity, which I'd also love that he's a Scott Pilgrim fan. And I know his name's Scott, so that's also another reason. But I'm, I'm a huge fan of that movie. So, like, the fact that he always has stuff like that. Uh, and then on his other album, he had one that was literally like Scott Meskidi, like versus the world or something like that. We'll get to that, but he always kind of has like callbacks to that. But this this album had fucking bangers, dude. It had bangers like Unfuckwittable, Just What I Am, uh, Young Lady, King Wizard, Immortal I Love, Solo Dolo Part 2 was also really good. And I believe that's the one that had, um, did they have Kendrick Lamar on it? I don't remember. But that one was fucking great too. Girls, New York City Rage Fest, Red Eye, Mad Solar Bees, Brothers, Burn Baby Burn, yeah, like The Fly of the Moon Man, Cold Blooded, like this had a lot of good fucking songs. And it, I really feel like it flies under the radar and everything. Um, but I will say, the other thing is, even though I, I like a lot of these songs, there's. Maybe only like a few that I love, you know, when you like, like I love bee, bees that had um RZA in it. I, I love that song to this day. I always like to play that a lot. Girls I'll play like quite a few times or Solo Dolo Part 2. Um, but overall, like I, it's not an album that I sit here and I'm like, I love it so much. Like it's, uh, you know, it's really good, but it's not like great like some of his other albums are. So, <clears throat> because of that, I would put this mm, B A B A. I'm gonna put it in B. I'm gonna put it in B. Yeah, I think that's a good spot for it. I'm gonna put it in B. It's really good, but it's not great. And, the, and just so we're clear, I, I like all of these. Like I love pretty much all of his music. So it's S A B C D still means that I listen to these songs and these albums more than I listen to a lot of other artists, so uh, just so we're clear. Alright. Up next, and this is what I was just literally talking about this song, but Man on the Moon 2. It starts off with um, Scott Meskety versus the world and i think that's the first time that i knew like oh okay he's a scott pilgrim fan that's cool and he has like subtle callbacks to that and like uh shout outs to that movie like throughout some of his uh, albums after that this album for me like kind of the same as the first man on the moon just it resonates with me so much <laughs> because this was when i like this came out right when i was getting out of high school and I was trying to like, you know, I remember clearly I was working at Toys R Us and I would listen to this album in my, like just in my ears, like with my headphones on 
while I was like stocking stuff before the the store opened. Uh, listening to it on my, in my car, you know, I had like the little CD and I pop it in there on my way over to work. And this is back when I was in Arizona. And I remember I uh, I had um, stayed with my my other uncle for a bit in California, and I listened to this so much. I remember I listened to R- R- Fev. I listened to that song so damn much. I listened to it so much. Like when I was sitting at his desk, like I was being as an intern at his um, at his um, I forget exactly what it was. Like it was a rent- rental kind of company. And I was an intern there, like, you know, sorting papers, and I would just listen to that all the time. This whole album, that song especially. But, I mean, this song, it has, I mean, is there a bad song on this album? Scott, <laughs> Scott Meskity, Versus the World, Reba Fade, Don't Play This Song, We I, Marijuana, Mojo So Dope, Ash and Kutcher, Kusher, sorry, not Kutcher, Kusher, Erase Me, Wildin' Cause I'm Young, the Mood, Maniac, Mr. Rager, These Worries, The End, All Along, Ghost, Trapped in My Mind. There's not a bad song. There's not a bad song on this album. There's not one bad song on this album. Like, it's insane. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, like, going crazy. Um, but it's insane. Like, there's not one bad song on this album. Um, it's it's great. And this is what I was talking about with Indica, where, like, there's not bad songs on Indica, but it's not great. Man on the Moon 2 is great. It is great and oh, man i just every single one of these songs i feel like i have some sort of like personal connection and story behind where like i was listening to this or while something you know crazy in my life was happening or i listened to it after something crazy in my life happened so i i before i started making this video i was wrestling whether or not i wanted to put man on the moon on an a or s but after everything i just said i'm definitely putting it in an s like yeah that, that has to be an s all right <clears throat> a kid named cuddy so this is an interesting one because it came out like 2008 but i hadn't heard this one before i heard it after i heard that kid from cleveland and man on the moon and i didn't realize it was like some mixtape you know i was just like oh i thought it was one of those things where people just put something together and like uh, you know put them on some stuff from like man on the moon and other stuff but no this came up before and it's like I was talking about with that kid from Cleveland, where it's like this compilation of different things, you know, that kind of were on that mixtape, but then ended up on a man, man on the moon. And let me just look up these uh, these song names and everything because I the thing about this one that I think differentiates it though is that there are a few songs that kind of set it apart like is there any love cuddy get um there's maui wow <laughs> i wasn't a, a huge fan of that one but i remember i think that one actually ended up on man on the moon but um 50 ways to make a record i love that song i fucking i love that song and there's just like i think cleveland is a re- like this and I, I'll, when i look through man on the moon too i'll see which ones ended up on there or not but Definitely some of these, it had like its own songs on this album that kind of set it apart from that kid from Cleveland. And even though a lot of those songs also ended up on Man on the Moon, like it, a kid named Cuddy still was able to be its own separate thing and be great on its own. So for that, I'm putting it one tier above that kid from Cleveland, I'm putting it in B. Also, that's a little bit too big. Let's, there we go. Yeah, that's nice. There we go. Beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a really good album and everything. The only thing is that... I'm sorry, the album mixtape. The only thing is that they, obviously a lot of the songs are going to Man on the Moon 2. And there's really only a few songs off of it that I'm like, yes, I love that. I still play them all the time. But, I mean, otherwise, like, really, really good and hold on one second okay sorry all right so then oh shit no all right so up next we're talking about speeding bullet to heaven so this one mm, 
This one is better than Wizard, first off. This is the second, like, rock album. And I know a lot of people hated his rock albums in general. This one I actually kind of liked. Like, I actually still listen to some of the songs on there. So, like, let's see. <clears throat> so, uh, I listen to Confused. I listen to Confused a lot. I love that song. Just the way it goes, like, Confused, this is what I knew. Asking, like, I just love his style. And, like, how he sings them and everything. Fade to Red. Um, the Nothing. That's a really good fucking song, too. Like, he had some... He had some good songs on here. Like, he really did. And I think Embers, that's a good one. Um, it, it was a good rock album, actually. Like, I thought he did a good job on this one. I know a lot of people, you know, talked about... He kind of channeled the... Uh, it's obviously not as good as Jimi Hendrix, but he kind of like channeled that a little bit and like the way he looks and everything. I mean, I know he even did that in the Erase Me video. He dresses like Jimi Hendrix. So it's like, I remember a lot of people wanted him to be like can Jimi Hendrix in a movie or something. And I think that he has a cool style with rock, but obviously that's not his, his strong suit. That's not, <laughs> you know, what he's meant to do. And the one thing that did put me off a little bit with the album was that he had these random skits in there, which sometimes could be funny, sometimes could be annoying. It had like the like Beavis and Butthead in them, which don't get mad at me, but I'm not a huge fan of Beavis and Butthead. Oh, like I never have been. I just thought they were annoying, to be honest. So that that kind of put me off a little bit. I wasn't into that. But otherwise, it's like a solid rock album. Like definitely step up from Wizard. So for this one. Putting that in C. That's a C. Yep. <clears throat> um, Alright, so, Kids See Ghost. Mm. I mean, Kids See Ghost, I put this in here because technically it is kind of a cutty album. He kind of like... It was like him and Kanye kind of re reuniting. Uh, I, maybe I'll do the, one of these with like Kanye later if people like this one, but... Uh, I I definitely have certain feelings about new Kanye. I'm not not a big fan of like new Kanye stuff, but definitely old old Kanye is that shit is like goaded. It's the best. Um, this and this wasn't bad. It had like seven songs, I believe, and it wasn't bad. They had they had some good stuff on there, <clears throat> like Kid Sea Ghost and the. Uh, the Cuddy montage and everything. The Cuddy montage I really liked a lot. Because it was mostly Kid Cuddy. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they had some good stuff on there for sure. I think every song was good. But it's like the same thing I said with like Indie Cut or something. It wasn't great. And then it was really short. So that was kind of my only thing with this. So overall, it was, it was good and not great. A little short. Kind of would have wanted maybe a little bit more. Obviously, I wanted more Kid Cuddy. Kanye wasn't bad on this, but yeah, for this one, I'm going to put it in C. <clears throat> All right, so Passion, Pain, and Demon Slaying. This one right here. Um, Sorry, let me just make sure I have all the songs up right here. Passion, Pain, and Demon Slaying. So this one came out in 2016, first off. And 2016, for a lot of people, obviously not all people, was a very um, tumultuous year. <laughs> um, I know the beginning of that year, my grandmother passed away. And obviously that was the year that Trump had uh, won the presidency, which wasn't fun for certain people, me included. So it was a tough year, you know? I was trying to... You know, get through work and trying to finish, you know, school and everything. Or I had moved to San Francisco like the year before. And so this was like a weird kind of transitional period that year and just so much happening. Um, and this album came out in like December. And honestly, it was so good. It was so good. Like, just surprisingly so. I wouldn't say surprisingly so. It was just way better than 
I expected because it kind of came out of nowhere and he just dropped it. Like, it was refreshingly great. Honestly, it was really, really good. Not every song on it is good. There are some that, you know, when I'm listening to this, I just skip them, to be honest. And I mean, that's with every album. I don't listen to every single one. I mean, besides maybe Man on the Men too, but you know, even a couple of those, you know, I'm like, I, you know, I don't love that song. It's still pretty good, but yeah um but yeah i mean there's a lot of good songs on here ones that i really like i like frequency i like by design that's a great great song rose golden is good with uh willow smith like i know that was surprisingly good baptized and fighter flight at first sight i love that too i think he has like two songs on here with andre 3000 and like if you put andre 3000 in this song yeah i'm here for it does it great song Distant Fantasies, I love that. Wounds, Cosmic Warrior, The Guide, love that song too. Surfing's pretty good as well. And then this album kind of had everything. It had kind of like the mellow things. And that, I, I remember that's the only thing that I kind of criticized with Man on the Moon 2. And sometimes Man on the Moon 2 was very like melancholy. It was very uh, almost depressing in a way. And it has, Man on the Moon 2, as great as it is, has this kind of weird... Um, nostalgic feel and nostalgia isn't always good <laughs> sometimes it's like a very like weird feeling when you get nostal this nostalgic feeling and it can be nice but sometimes it can be kind of like Ugh, you're like I don't like that I feel like really nostalgic right now you know and Man on the Moon 2 had a lot of this this one like even like the more melancholy like songs they just they it feels good to listen to this album it feels really good but that being said, I feel like there's maybe like five, six songs that I really, really love. And all the rest of them kind of like, those are good. Those are pretty good. So overall, it has great songs on it, but the album itself isn't great. So because of that, I'm putting this one in A. That's also a little bit too big. There we go. Alright, so yeah, we're putting that one in A. Really, really good album. Not quite great, but it's close. It's very, very close. It's so close. Um, all right, so up next, we have Satellite Flight. So this one, just got to look up, make sure I got all this on deck. So Satellite Flight, The Journey to Mother Moon. When this album came out, I believe it was 2014, I thought... I thought that this was Man on the Moon 3. Like, I honestly was like, oh shit, this is Man on the Moon 3. Like, it's it's here. Like, it's out. Holy shit. Like, and I even looked at the track list before it came out, because it was only like 10 songs. I looked at the track list, and they had songs like, you know, In My Dreams 2015 and everything. So it came out like 20, I think 2014, 2015? I think it came out 2015. Though. Destination Mother Moon, I was just like, yo, this is, this is, um, this is Man on the Moon 3. But, you know, when you listen to it, it's not quite, you can tell it's not quite Man on the Moon 3. You know, you're like, okay, it wasn't exactly meant for that. Um, I almost treat this album as kind of like a transitional period into Man on the Moon 3 eventually. Obviously, there was stuff between that, but I don't know. It's like, if you, I feel like if you listen to Man on the Moon, Man on the Moon 2, this... And Man on the Moon 3, they all kind of, in terms of theme, they would go together very nicely. And this one's like a transition between that. Um, I will say, this has one of my favorite Kid Cudi songs, like ever, of all time. In Bomb Man Jeans. Bomb Man Jeans, however you say it. Because it, it has Raphael Sadiq, and I just love the way he sings. I love the way the song goes. Like, it's all just, like, beautiful. I, I absolutely love that song. But otherwise, these are like good songs on here. Destination Mother Moon, Going to Ceremony, Satellite Flight, Copernicus Landing. Uh, I'm not a big, huge fan of that one, but it's like not bad. Too Bad I Have to Destroy You Now. Internal Bleeding I really like. In My Dreams 2015 isn't bad. Short, but it's not bad. Return of the Moon Man and Trouble Boy is another one I really like. Um, so overall, 
really good. It does have one of my favorite Kid Cudi songs of all time in Bomb and Jeans. I listen to that all the time, like to this day. So th- this, <laughs> this makes the rank hard because I really, really, really love that song. But the rest of the album, I was just kind of like, it's there, <laughs> you know? So can I really rank it that high off of one song? This one I'm going to put in B. I'm going to put it in B only because of Bob Man Jeans. <laughs> That's literally, like, it's such a good song. I love that song so much. Um, it's it's amazing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put it in there. All right, so. Uh, so I was going to talk about this later, obviously. And here we are. So Man on the Moon. Like, this is the album that really kicked off my fandom of Kid Cudi. Like, obviously, I think that's mostly everybody's that kicked off their fandom, unless they listened to the mixtapes before, then they probably did. Then, like, cool, you know? Like I said, I like that kid in Cleveland, that, that I'm sorry, that kid from Cleveland and a kid named Cudi came first. And I actually didn't listen to a kid named Cudi until after I heard Man on the Moon, which is funny. But, like, this album has banger after banger (laughs) like oh my god and this gives you like that nostalgic feel but in a good way and that's kind of the difference i feel like between this album and man on the moon 2 is it gives you like such just the best nostalgic feeling because it just reminds me of like like really good times in high school and then right after high school and everything like (sighs) Like, going on trips, like, field trips for school, or going on, like, you know, bus rides during basketball or track back in high school. Like, it brings back really cool memories, because I listened to this so much. And I remember I was, like, I was hating on Kid Cudi at first when I was in high school, because I didn't like Day and Night. I didn't like Day and Night. So I was like, oh, yeah, I hate that. I I wasn't a big fan of Day and Night. I was like, hey. It's okay. But after I actually listened to the entire album, like he quickly became one of my favorite artists of all time. So, yeah, you know, they, you can't judge somebody off of one song. You never know what else they have. So I was trying to listen. I almost feel like he's the reason why, you know, I listen to somebody and I'm like, I'm going to listen to a couple of their songs, see how I feel. Because I used to, when I was like, you know, real young, I'm based off of one song and I'm like, hate him, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to listen to this person. But, you know, sometimes you got to give them a few chances. Depends. Unless they're just really, really bad in that one song. You're like, okay, maybe not. Maybe not. But, yeah. And I will say he came out with, like, so many remixes of Day and Night later that I actually did like. So, I guess, yeah, I kind of like Day and Night now. (laughs) Um, But, I mean, this, this album from beginning to end is perfect. No. No, it's not perfect, but it's it's great. It's so great. Like in my dreams is the perfect start, and it, it has that ding, 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 and like that's just like his thing, you know. Like that is that is his anthem, and it's called the Cutter Anthem on there. Like when you hear that, you just know, like, oh, Kid Cudi's coming. It's Kid Cudi, you know. So just yeah, soundtrack to my life. I mean, to this day, I listen to that because it's just, you can relate to it. It's just like soundtrack to my life. You know, this, this fucking album is a soundtrack to my life. Simple as great song. Solo Dolo is one of my favorite songs of all time. I love that song. Whenever I get like a new pair of headphones or a new sound system, I don't, I don't really get new sound systems. Like if I get a new car or something and I want to test the sound system, like shit like that, I put this song on because I, the beat is amazing. The bass is crazy and i always put the song on to kind of like test that out and see i'm like this is my favorite song of all time sound good on here and i am i, I could probably say this is my favorite song of all time i love solo dolo so much i love it so much heart of a lion <laughs> love that song my world when i first listened to the album that was my favorite song and then solo dolo kind of overtook it day and night didn't love it before but now I, I have an appreciation for Day and Night. Sky Might Fall, great song. 
Intergalactic Intergal- is actually probably my least favorite song on the album, but it's still good. Alive, I love that song too. Cuddy Zone, good song. Make Her Say, that was like one of those ones that he released kind of like to the mainstream and like, you know, one of the main ones. But it's a really good song. I, and that's like one of the first things I heard Lady Gaga in. And she's actually, she was really good. Pursue the Happiness, I uh, love that song. Like the video to that song, everything. Like Pursue the Happiness is just like, and I love the remix to that song too, which I think they had in like Project X. So that's a great, great remix. Higher, great song. Up, Up, and Away, great song. Day and Night Crookers remix, great song. TGIF, that's a good song. Man on the Moon, good song. Is There Any Love, love that song. And like I'm naming those off, and like some of those were on a kid named Cuddy. Some of those were on that kid from Cleveland. And it's just like it's amazing that he kind of took the best of both of those mixtapes, like put them on this, and it's just uh, sorry. I just I could ramble on forever about this. So let me just go ahead. You already know. Like Man on the Moon is. An S tier, obviously. It's an S tier. Like, there's no way it's not going to be. Now, we're going to talk about Man on the Moon 3. So this one just came out. And so when I first listened to it, I was I was at work. I was in my truck, and I didn't get one of the trucks that I could, like, plug it into Bluetooth. And at first I was like, oh, man, you know, it's good. There's some decent songs there, but I don't really hear any, like, bangers and then i did get a truck that i could plug the bluetooth in and then i changed my mind i was like okay there's a lot of bangers on here you know i like my bangers i also like the beautiful songs too but i like my bangers you know i need some bangers so i will say like just going off of like right now i already like beautiful trip i like tequila shots i like she knows this dive damaged heaven on earth show out i really like solo part solo dolo part three it's not bad hey I I think I expect a little bit more from it because it has Solo Dolo in it. Like, I think it goes Solo Dolo, Solo Dolo Part 2, and then Solo Dolo Part 3. Like, that's, yeah. Sad People, Elsie's Baby Boy. Elsie's Baby Boy, actually, I really like the chorus on that. That's nice. Um, The Pale Moonlight, love that song. It's really good. For the Kids, also really good. And Lord I Know is also really good. It's, It's really early. I've listened to it, like four or five times now i still feel like it's so early for me to try and like rank this within these you know it's really hard Mm. like i'm thinking of it in terms of where i rank the rest of these right now and i will say i think already has more songs on it that i like overall than like everybody everything in the b tier I do feel like it's and I'm stuck between it putting in A or like somewhere in between, I don't know. And somewhere in between A and B, like because it's, it's so early. Um But there are a lot of songs I really like. And I will say something that's really like grabbing me right now is that Cuddy right now is releasing all these music videos on his channel, which are basically like a a little mini movie that all connect with certain songs and i really love how he's doing that and it does give you more of an appreciation of the song when you see that so i'm like with that because i feel like you know all of these songs i've had so many time so much time to listen to all these other albums and mix tapes and they've had their music videos and all sorts of things that have been made or talked about with his songs with these ones and they've had a chance to like shine and everything so it's like i think once all the all those come out and i get to see these music videos and like everything that goes along with it and other people like talking about it and doing this and that i think that it might be higher but for now uh i'm gonna put man on the moon three in a and just so we're clear i'm putting it in a but i do put it a little bit lower than passion pain and demon slam right now only because I don't think it resonates quite the same yet as these top three with Patch of Pain, Demon Slaying, Man on the Moon 1, and Man on the Moon 2. But we'll see. We'll see. You know, this is going to be, 2021 is going to be an interesting year. I'm probably going to, you know, go back and forth listening to this album plenty of times. Um, 
yeah, I mean, Kid Cudi, he has amazing music. He's one of those artists that just, whenever he releases something, I'm like, yes, absolutely, thank you, let's go. Like, I'm excited. And, I mean, it's the same for this one. It's, it's a great album already, I feel like. We'll see how I feel later, if it's, like, even better. Because, honestly, every time I listen to it, I feel like I like it more and more. I don't know if it'll get on the same level as Man on the Moon 1 and 2. But we will see, man. We will see. Right now, I'm putting it in A. It might be S. I don't think it'll go lower because I do feel like it's already better than the three that I have in B tier. But, yeah, I mean, that's my list. Real quick, though, I do want to talk about album artwork. Because Kid Cudi has amazing album artwork. And I'm just going to, like, rapid fire do this. I'm going to, like, switch this up real quick to, like, my favorite album artwork. So I'm going to put... A kid named Cuddy down here because it was just a mixtape. Didn't have anything crazy. I'm going to put that kid from Cleveland up here because that's just so iconic to me, that album artwork. I will put Man on the Moon 3 up here because these the Man on the Moon, they all have great things. Uh, this one I'm going to put <laughs> in C because it's literally just him with his shirt off. I, I always find it so awkward when artists do that because I'm like sitting here listening to their album and it just like pops up on my like phone or like iPod back in the day. Like, I remember Trey Songs had that one album that I really loved, and I listened to it a lot. But it was really awkward, like, listening to that, and it's just like <laughs> Trey Songs with a shirt off, like, hey, yeah, you like that, don't you? I'm just like, oh, it's not bad. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's, just, it, it's awkward. Like, I like the color of it, but yeah, I also wanna, I'm going to leave Wizard down there because the album cover. I remember when it came out, it was really interesting, like, seeing him spell Wizard like that. <laughs> but other than that, like, eh, you know, Kitsy Ghost, I'm going to put in B, because that's pretty cool. Indica, I like that. I like the whole aesthetic of that album had, and, like, the videos, and they had the little the frames around for, like, the videos. Um, Satellite Flight, I'm going to put down here. I wasn't a big fan of that, but I don't know. I think that looks, that looks pretty good. I like that. So for album covers, that's where I would rank these. You know, and just so we're clear, my number one album cover is still Man on the Moon. And it even has, like, kind of the alternate album cover, where on the other side it's kind of like that skull, kind of sort of like this one. And, yeah, Man on the Moon still has the... the fucking best. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, you know, Man on the Moon 2 had Mr. Rager with the suit and everything, and he kind of brought those back in these music videos he's doing. So, I, yeah, I absolutely. Like, his artwork is always pretty on point most of the time. And yeah, that's where I rank these. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you have ranked these albums and album covers if you want to. Tell me what your favorite songs are by Kid Cudi. Uh, let me know if you want me to do any other artists like Kid Kanye West or somebody like that. Um, I'm definitely down to do that. And uh, thank you for tuning in and watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.